I'm going to try to do a tutorial thing for this little journal folio that um, several people have asked about. It is a cardstock cover deal and inside <coughs> it's got some pockets. It's got a place for two signatures and I've made mine two little junk journal signatures but you can just use regular paper and make it an actual book if you want. It's got a pocket divider in the middle and then in the back it's got a pocket that you can slip one of these notepads in. <coughs> and then it closes up and the little closure doubles as a pen holder. So, they, they're not difficult to do at all, but um, there is some measuring involved which can be a little tedious, or at least it is for me. I hope I remembered to put the list of the stuff that you'll need in the video description. But in case I didn't, here's what you need. And you should just stop what you're doing right now and just go grab your stuff, get what you need, and make one with me. Just get some scrap stuff. You don't have to make a nice one. Just do, do like a little prototype. That's what I usually do. Make a prototype before I do the real one. You're going to need two sheets of 12 by 12 scrapbook paper or cardstock. I usually use a uh, either a heavy scrapbook paper or a cardstock. Doesn't matter. You need it to be double sided, and the sides. It helps if they have a different pattern. Some scrapbook papers will have the same pattern on both sides. Um, I think most of them are usually different though. So just make sure that your front and back is different. It's not crucial, but it does make it a little bit easier once you start cutting and folding to remember what's the front, what's the back. If you're like me, you're easily confused. That's an issue. You're going to need something to cut your paper with. You need one of these paper cutters, or you can use an X-Acto with a straight edge, you know, whatever floats your boat. You're also going to need a pair of scissors with paint on them, if they have to have paint on them. You're going to need some, uh, oh, you're going to need a ruler of some sort. You're going to need a bone folder or something similar because you're going to be scoring some lines. You can use the edge of the point of your scissors um, carefully or bone folder if you have it. You are going to need some kind of glue that works well on paper. Uh, mine may not actually work well on anything until I dig the glue booger out. I broke the top of it so it kind of lives here and then it all dries out. I dig it out, I use it, it you know, we, we've got it worked out. You may also need some double stick tape, any size. This just happens to be what I have. Uh, you can use just glue or just tape on the whole thing, but there's a couple of areas where I prefer glue here and tape there, so you might want to have double stick tape. You're going to need a piece of scrap paper to use as a template for punching the holes to bind your book. You're going to need a pokey tool to poke those holes in your books. Uh, if you don't have a, a pokey tool, uh, an awl, then you can use something like a thumbtack or a thick needle will work fine. You're going to need a needle anyway, like a tapestry needle. Can you hear the cat? Oh, yeah, now I talk about him and he quits. Yeah, uh -huh, yeah. It's my neighbor's cat who thinks he's our cat. We have not fed him or anything, but we do go out there and pet him occasionally because he lives in our yard. I don't know when he goes home to eat, but, you know, he's fat, so he's eating somewhere. But the cat thinks he lives here. Of course, it doesn't help that we go out there and love on him. Anyway, he sees me through the window, so he's, he's yelling at me. Um... Needle. Needle and thread. The, I use waxed linen for books. 
but um, use what you have. Don't worry about fancy book stuff. You know, if you've got cat string, that'll work fine. Use cat string. Just use what you have. It'll be fine. You are going to need a pencil to mark some measurements, probably. You're going to need some signatures for inside your book, and I've got two junk signatures already made up. You know, if you don't happen to have junk signatures laying around, just fold you a couple of pieces of paper or cardstock, like this one. I just folded eight and a half by eleven sheet of cardstock. That was my signature. So you can do that for your prototype book. And what else? Oh, you may need, you, if you don't have a book cradle, um, you can use a phone book. Just open it up and you lay your signature in the crease to poke your holes. That's what the cradle's for. It's just something to hold your signature while you're poking holes. So that's all that is. So that's all you need. Easy stuff, nothing really special. And first thing we're going to do, see here's where I always screw up in tutorials, is I, I don't do it in a logical order because I'm making it up as I go. I'll just go ahead and tell you. So I'm going to I'm gonna try to do this to where it makes sense. Um, oh, I have, I made up, see now if I was a really good instructor, I would have made these into like a PDF or something that you could download, but I'm not a really good instructor. These are two 12 by 12 sheets. This is kind of the pattern or the template for what we're going to be cutting and folding on our two sheets. This is the back, this is the front, and I usually work from the inside. This is the outside of the book cover, um, but I usually work with them like this. And we're going to make, this one is has the most cuts and folds, and it's not complicated. And it really doesn't have to be exact either, so don't, don't worry too much about that. This one, simple, simple. And we're going to use all these, this piece that we cut off is going to be the little tab closure where your pen goes. And this piece that we cut off is going to be a pocket over here. And this piece that we cut off is the only waste that you're going to have. You won't need that little piece, but you're going to need all the rest. So we're going to make good use of our two pieces of, of uh, scrapbook paper. And let's do this one first. And I'm going to, you know, if you have a piece of paper, you might want to sketch this out um, real quick. You know, it doesn't have to be to scale, but just make it a little square and just note the sizes. And like I said, when I made this, I didn't measure anything. I just folded it till it fit. And then I went back and measured it when I decided to do this tutorial. I had several people ask me if I would do this, which I'm more than happy to do. But then I was like, ew, I guess I better measure. I can't really tell them just fold it till it looks right. You know, like how your mother tells you on a recipe, just just add enough till it tastes right. Oh gosh, that irritates me. That's why I don't cook. Okay, I've got my two pieces here and I'm gonna decide, I want this for the front because she's going to, it's going to fold over like this and she's going to fit just perfect. So this will be my front piece, this will be my back piece, and we're going to do the front first. So I'm going to set this aside. And what I usually do, because <laughs> I learned the hard way, is I go ahead and do all of my scoring and cutting completely on this sheet before I move to the next one. Otherwise, I end up screwing up and I cut off things on one sheet that should have been off the other, you know what I'm saying. So we're going to start with this one first. We're going to make our score lines and then we're going to cut. Okay, it says inside front is facing up. So this is the outside. This will be the inside of my front cover. I want it facing up. And the first score line that I'm going to make is to come up from the bottom. We're going to come up three and a quarter inches, score it all the way across. So let's do that. I'm just going to use my little thingy here. You use whatever it is that you like to use to score stuff. 
I just got this paper cutter, so we're still kind of getting acquainted. If I seem a little awkward with it, it's because I am. Yeah, three and a quarter. Okay, scored three and a quarter, and that's at the bottom. Now, this is face up. Not face up, still face down, but right side up. We're going to measure from the left edge, you're going to come over five and three quarters. So five and three quarter. I doubt you can see my little measurements there, but just trust me, I think I've got it right. And score. Now from the five and three quarter, from this line, we're going to come over four and three quarter. So move this one over to four and three quarters. Score it. This is going to be a cut line right here, but I usually score it first because I need this little bottom piece scored. Now that leaves us an inch and a half right there. So what I'm going to do now is just cut, cut this at the four and three quarter thing, cut this right here to the score line, to the horizontal score line. That's as far down as I'm going to go. And then you can see I kind of angled this down a little bit. And that's just because it makes it easier when things fold up. Because if it's straight across, sometimes it's not folded completely right. And then it gets hung up. You know what I'm talking about. So I just, and I don't measure, I just kind of eyeball just a little bit of an angle in so that um, things fold up nicely. So cut this piece off. You can use your scissors. I'm, I think I'm just going to use my cutter since it's laying right here. Go to my line there. Here's where I am. Then I'm just going to use my scissors to make that little angle cut. Just like that. See? Just, oh, so slightly. There we go. That got kind of wonky. That's okay. And then we're going to hold on to this. And we need to make one more cut. Let's let's score, I mean let's um, crease all of these score lines before I do that. Now we're going to make one more little cut. Same reason that we angled this one. If you can see right here. I angled that to same reason so that when we fold it up, if we're not completely straight, there's no little edge hanging off over there because that just irritates me. And I don't measure, I just eyeball it. I'd say move over maybe an eighth of an inch and then just angle it up to that crease. There we go, just like that. So, front cover done. We'll move to the back. This is my back piece, and as you can see, I've got the inside facing up. So, flip it. Now, I'm going to, like I did on the other one, I'm going to do the horizontal crease first. I'm going to come up same amount, three and a quarter from the bottom. So here's the bottom, three and a quarter. straight again. Now, this time, remember over here we came over from the left five and three quarter and four and three quarter. Okay, we're going to reverse it. This time we're going to come over four and three quarter first. We've got a little quarter inch thing. Then five and three quarter. So, our first crease from the left, four and three quarter. 
over. So put my left edge on four and three quarters. And next, we need a little quarter inch. This is going to be a little gusset. This is because our notepad is going to be about a quarter of an inch thick. So we need to make sure that this fits around it. That's what that quarter inch is for. So just scooch this over, quarter of an inch. Five and three quarter from okay, four and three quarter, one quarter inch. Now from from this one, we're gonna go over five and three quarter. So I know you probably can't see it because I can't see it. I can feel it. From my last score mark, I'm gonna come over five and three quarter. There we go. Now, from that score mark, we're going to come over a quarter inch and then a half inch. So we need two more score lines. We've got this one. We're going to come over a quarter inch, do another one, then a half inch, and do our last one. Looks good. Now, let's go ahead and crease all of our score lines. Okay, we've got our little quarter inch there. We've got our quarter inch right there and our half inch here. So this quarter inch and this quarter inch is so that our um, notepad will fit correctly. This half inch crease right here if you'll see it just makes getting this closure in and out easier if there's a little crease there see what I'm saying so if there's not it just kind of bends the cardstock and yeah it's no fun so there's what we have now we've got some cuts to make First one I'm going to make is this little this little angle cut again, right here on the edge. Come over just a little bit, you know, eighth of an inch maybe. Angle it up to that three and a quarter inch crease. And I'm just going to eyeball it. just like that. Now we're going to come up, now this, this is important, you want to really pay attention because we're going to make a cut on this first four and three quarter crease. Make sure you don't cut the wrong one because you've got that little quarter inch one right next to it. You want to cut the one on the left, the first crease that we made, and you're just going to cut up to the three and a quarter inch line. See, we're making just a little flap right there. So, pay attention. There's my right hand quarter inch crease. There's my left hand. This left hand is the one that I want. I want to cut just right up to the three and a quarter line, and I'm just going to use my scissors. I've still got my little quarter inch there. Okay. Now the next cut I want to make is this one right here. And when I did this, of course I just eyeballed it, but I did a measurement so it wouldn't be too confusing for y'all. And what you can do if you want to measure is, okay, you've got this quarter inch little gusset right here. So you have the left side and you have the right side. 
you want to measure from the right side to the edge of the paper at the three and a quarter inch mark you want to come up about two and a quarter inches again this is not exact just if you need to eyeball it that's fine just make sure that you over here remember we did the left side of our gusset but over here we're going to cut on the right side of our quarter inch gusset so there's the left side of it, there's the right side of it. So I'm going to measure up about two and a quarter. And then just going to draw a line to that three and a quarter inch horizontal crease. That's what you're cutting off. And this is our little, this is our big trash that we're going to make. So, there you have it. It's going to look like that. Okay, so we've got one more cut to make. And this one is easy. You don't need to measure, but you might need a straight edge. We're going to come up to this three and a quarter inch horizontal line and we're going to make a um, mark, fold up your um, flap that you made and just kind of make a mark. So it's, this is three and a quarter, this is three and a quarter, get it? From that mark you're going to draw a line to the end to this first left hand crease on the quarter inch gusset. You're going to end it right there and you're going to cut just like that to that first crease. Okay, cut that off. Save that piece, you're going to need it. There it is. So we are all cut and ready to go. Now here's where I confuse myself. Um, I think that it would be better at this point to go ahead and poke our holes for our book. Yeah, I think so. So let's do that. Um, we've got our two things here. Now, I'll show you exactly where these holes are going to go because this can be confusing. Remember we have, this is our front cover, it's the one that looks like this. We're going to, the binding for the first signature is going to go through the left, or go through the center crease that we have on our front cover. So right here, this is where we're going to poke the holes for that signature. For the second signature on the back cover, okay, you've got your, we've got our little quarter inch gusset over here on the left side, right? And this gusset has a left crease and a right crease, quarter inch between it. The holes for our book are going to go on the left crease because the right crease is what gives us the space for our notebook. See? So let's poke these holes on the left crease. Okay. Right crease. Left crease. That's where our holes are going to go. Over here. Left crease. Line these up at the top. So we're going to poke them at the same time. 
so that the holes are exactly the same in both pieces. See, that's where I usually just, I usually don't even do that till close to the end, and then I poke the holes separately because I've already folded and glued and taped, and then they're just slightly off, which is not a big deal, but maybe this will keep yours from being slightly off. Now, I'm going to pull these up so that it'll fit in my cradle. Left crease. There we go. Actually, you do want to pull these up because your holes are going to go through. Okay, yeah. See, I'm making it up as I go along. Fold up your bottom part before you poke your holes. You don't have to tape or glue, but make sure it's folded up. Okay, left crease, center crease, line them up. And stick this here. Now, for our holes. You need three. You need one kind of in the middle and then two more, you know, kind of equally spaced on either side. If you want to measure this, go ahead, get your ruler, measure. If you want to eyeball it, that'll work fine, doesn't matter. This piece of paper needs to be the same length as your signature. Um, in yours, hopefully you have an eight and a half by eleven signature. So you can just get you a piece of eight and a half by eleven scrap paper, fold it in half, and that's going to fit perfectly right there. My signatures are smaller because I actually had made these for something else and had them left over, so I'm using them here. As you can see, they're not quite that tall, so I cut down my template to be exactly the same length as my signature. So that's what you got to do. The length, this length doesn't matter. It's the length of your signature that matters. And we don't have to punch these at the same time. What you want to do, mark the middle, and then I usually come in about an inch and a half from either end and put my other two marks. So that's all you need. Like I said, either measure or eyeball it, doesn't matter. If you'll notice on these, the binding really doesn't show that much. See, it's, it just looks like a little, little hole. So precision is not a huge thing here. Now, I'm going to put these here, make sure that they're even. If you need to put a binder clip or a paper clip on your stuff to keep it together, go ahead and do that. Okay, this is important. You're going to want to mark your, um, where's my, my pencil? Oh, you're going to want to mark your template, top and bottom. It does matter. I don't care how precisely you have measured these holes. If you punch your covers like this and you punch your signatures like this, you will be slightly off. It's like a Murphy's Law thing. You know, it doesn't matter how well you've measured Murphy's Law, you will be slightly off. For this book, like I said, precision doesn't really matter. But just get in the habit of doing this for other books too. Mark the top and place it at the top of your book. Since my signatures are a little bit smaller than my covers, I'm just going to kind of eyeball this and center it. That's exactly how my signatures are going to lay in the book. And then I'm going to poke. poked. Ready to go. 
So now I've got my binding holes. Everything's folded up. Now we're ready to start gluing. On the templates, did you have enough time to sketch these out? I hope so. Maybe if I can figure out how to, I'll try to take a picture and put it at the end of the video so that you can um, stop it there and then look at this real good and, and sketch it out if you need to. That's the way I do things. I don't know. It may not help you at all. I've marked on here, there's one little gluing area that's going to be a little confusing. Um, hopefully not too bad. But I'll, I'll, let's use this and I'll show you how this fits together. Inside back, inside front. So these two flaps are our center section. Obviously we're going to fold these. Not quite so obviously. This one we're going to fold up. This is the flap that our notepad goes in. This one, as you can see, this is going to make a pocket here. We're going to fold this to the back. Over here, these go up. So that's our book. Now this, the center part right here, you can see I marked glue A, glue A. That's because these two pieces get glued to each other. The reason for that is because this slash pocket right here, when you put something in it, you want it to have a bottom. You don't want it to fall out. So this is going to act as the bottom of that pocket. If you glue it to the opposite side, then whatever you put in this slash pocket will have a bottom and it won't fall out. So that's what that is. This one, you can see I marked it glue B, glue B. These two, you glue together like that just to hold everything together. Okay, so here we've got a pocket with a bottom because it's, it's using the, the bottom right there. And then over here, this little flap just comes around to hold it all together. Make sense? And then we have our, our holes poked along this line and this line for binding. There's another glue place right here. We're going to glue that little quarter inch strip up right there. Okay, this is our pocket. Then we're going to glue this quarter inch strip and that little triangle. We're going to glue all that down just like that. So see? And it's these little strips. That's where I like to use my double stick tape. But like I said, glue is fine. Use whatever. So let's do this on our real one. See how far we get. See how bad I can confuse you. All right. We got this going on. We got this going on, right? You with me? There we go. This one up, this one back. This will come around like that. 